All right. Um, as far as injuries go, um, Demarcus uh, Robinson really is the only one that won't practice today. He's sick. Um, getting better, but sick. Um, and then we look forward to the challenge of playing the 49ers. Uh, what a great atmosphere it will be and a uh, great spot in Miami. Um, Kyle Shanahan has done a phenomenal job with that football team. And, um, you know, again, we look forward to that challenge of playing him as, and his coordinators and, and players. They're, they've got a great bunch there. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. Coach, uh, we know you cherish your time with us, but uh, with all the extra media and everything that goes on, how much of a distraction is that? How much does that complicate your preparation? So, so man, we've really kept it. Um, we're, we've got a tight itinerary, and uh, we've, we're sticking to that. And Ted's done a good job of kind of keeping the media part organized. And, and um, you know, we're, we're there to, to play, but we're also there. It's a Super Bowl, and we understand everybody's got their jobs doing. People are interested, so we, we understand that. Does it allow you, is it like a full bye week, right? You, you know the word on your you after the bye week and what an advantage that is. Does it give you a full bye week or does it eat up half that, three quarters of that? Yeah, for the coaches, it's not bad. Um, next week, there, there's a few more distractions. But um, this week, you get yourself right and get the game plan ready and, and, and get ready to go. So, And then when you get down there, you, you're able to kind of go back through and review and finalize things and make sure everything's the way you want it. Guys like Stephen Wisniewski and Terrell Suggs have been in the Super Bowl you had. How much of the conversations between you three have been with the other players to tell them about the experience and what they're about to get into? Yeah, um, they've talked and um, to the guys and uh, not necessarily collectively, but they've had a chance to share uh, some of their experiences with them. So it's, uh, it's been part of it, yeah. And is part of that turning off the celebration of, of Sunday and, and getting your mind right for the next game? And how, how? Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, it was a matter of getting back in the swing of things. And there, there's, you don't have the time to, right now, to do all of that. You, you have the time initially. Uh, but the guys were back in to work, and the coaches were back in that next day going, and um, then the players came in on a normal week. So, um, I, listen, I can't uh, – you have to put it behind you relatively quick. But like they know, um, there's a whole off season to do all that, <laughs> right? So right now they, they're, they're pretty focused in. Can you take us through the practice schedule this week? I mean, is today a normal Wednesday? Yeah, so today's normal Wednesday, tomorrow normal. We'll take it all the way through Friday. Uh, Saturday it's shut down so they can get everything together to move on Sunday. Um, so we'll be going. And then we get down there, we'll practice on Monday and Tuesday. When, you know, we kind of get back into a normal routine. So you're into game plan prep already? Yes. Yeah. When you uh, were in the Super Bowl before with the Eagles, it was Jacksonville. This is Miami. Could be a lot of distractions. Have you guys gotten to where you're going to do curfews? How are you going to treat the guys when they get down there on those those nights where it's, you know, you're, it's a, it can be a distracting place? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a. A curfew, just so we can kind of keep track of everybody. But it's not one that we don't trust the guys. I mean, it's late, so um, I mean, I trust that they're going to handle themselves the right way. And there's a normal curfew before the night of the game, but um, the other one's a little bit later, just so we make sure everybody's accounted for, you know, and ready to go for the following day. Go ahead. Well, you kind of asked since you've been to a Super Bowl as a coordinator and then obviously as a coach, um, you know. Will you at least, I guess, on the, on the plane right there, kind of, you know, let them know what they're going to be, what to expect, you know, open at night, and then, you know, the distraction, the family, and then stuff like that, because it's going to be something that they've never experienced only outside of a few places. Sure. Areas. Yeah, we, we've addressed all that. We've uh, um, got a great bunch of people that work for us here, and they're so organized. Um, starting with Mark. I mean, Mark Donovan doesn't get near enough credit for all that he does, and. Um, Keeping us all together, so. Um, uh, but he's he's got it really well organized. He also has been there, so he knows uh, a little bit of the chaos that goes on once you get there. But um, it's it's well, you know, they've done a nice job. Mitch Rose has been very involved with it, and he's done a nice job with it. So um, 
it, it's uh, and we we've talked to the team. They they know, uh, you know, the whole deal. They've they've got the they've had it laid out to them. So. Andy, along those lines, how do you think your past experiences benefit you? In your own perspective coming into this, having been to Super Bowls before and it's passing. Yeah, um, I, I don't think it can hurt. Um, so I, yeah, I have been there and and uh, been through it. And there, I I know the fact that there are things that go on down there. I mean, the, there's just a lot of events and a lot of media response. Excuse me, responsibility. So we've got to just make sure we stay on top of that and uh, you know, and we keep it organized. And Ted Ted does a phenomenal job of that. So. Um, you know, then we then we go. But I try to keep everything cut and dry, and guys know where they're going, where they're at, and what they have to do. And I'm not just keeping them busy to keep them busy. I trust that they're they're, they're men, and they'll handle it the right way. Is it any way a calming sort of thing for you to, to you know you've been there, and sort of at, and trace trace what it what it will feel like? Yeah, I wouldn't say anything out of the norm other than you've been there, right? So you you've been through it, um, so you kind of know what to what to expect. So. I don't know if that's calming, but it's. Uh, um, I know what to expect, and normally that's okay. You know, normally that's a good thing. So, coach, thinking of 49ers, what's your main concern if you have any? Well, I think they're well coached. I think they're a real good football team, and they're they're solid on uh, both sides of the ball and special teams. So, um, you know, you, but that's what you get when you're the last two teams going. I mean, that's that's what you expect, um, and. We're in it for the challenge, and this is a great challenge, and uh, that's why we do what we do. Nate, uh, Andy, I'm, I'm curious, year one and year two for Anthony Hitchens, just what have you um, appreciated that what he's done this year and just seeing the way he's developed as the season's gone along? Yeah, so Hitch is, uh, again, one of the captains. He, he um, um, voted on by, by his team and teammates, and that's uh, – that's a that tells you kind of the story. Well respected, he does his homework. Extremely hard worker, and uh, the guys respect him for that. Andy, did, did this championship feel any different for you than 2004? I wish I, I, um, I, I can't remember all the details of how I prepped for it, but I, I uh, that was a long time ago. Um, but I, I, from my recollection, I, we were very similar, you know, to getting to this point. Yeah, you, listen, I think because you're, I, yeah, I, mean, I can tell you, I think because you're older, uh, back then you go, oh, we've got the one here, we'll get to, you know, a million of them, you know, but it uh, doesn't quite come that easy. So I think you just, uh, you respect it and uh, appreciate it probably even a little bit more than I did back then. I appreciate it then, but I think it's something more, more, uh, no. Last third round of the bye, or last third round of the bye? Andy, just because you happen to be playing in San Francisco, I wonder if your mind has flashed back at all to your, your coaching roots uh, at San Francisco State. <coughs> and how much part of your career that you feel like that represented? It was really the start. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, I'd stayed on at BYU for a couple of years, and, and then uh, um, went to San Francisco State, worked for Vic Rowan, who um, was an older coach, very, very well respected in the, in, the, in the country, head of the College Football Coach Association, and, um, and he was a great teacher of coaches and players, tremendous amount of experience, and, and so it was great learning ground for me, and, uh, and you know, personally as a coach, um, and he gave me an opportunity to, to work, which I, I appreciated. And a program that size, Obviously, you're you're doing many things. I remember all the fundraising sorts of things. But I mean, does that give you a, a kind of underpinning to to do bigger things later? Yeah, I mean, I've come a long way from selling hot dogs to they actually Alan gives me a couple after the game, so I'm, I'm doing good. I don't pay for them. Um, but yeah, no, we we it was a Division Two non scholarship program. So a great conference, the Northern California Athletic Conference was a great conference and um, put out a lot of coaches, a lot of players. And um, great experience. So you know, it gave you that uh, respect factor to where you are now, and you appreciate it. You don't take it for granted. And uh, for being here, you feel very privileged to be in this position. Coach, uh, you faced a couple of teams in the playoffs already that had had success running the ball against you, and you 
much more successful this time around. This is another team that obviously runs the ball really well. But uh, are we seeing the evolution with the rules, and how good players are, your receivers, Patrick Holmes, but quarterbacks and receivers around? And, you know, the old adage, you got to run to win, just isn't the reality of the game anymore. Um, I, you know what? I, I want to believe that, uh, but I, you still, I, I think combinations are good. Or uh, playing the team's strengths and weakness. I think those are important matchups, all those things, and that's been forever. So I, I think it depends on who you're playing, where you're playing, what you're doing, what you're best at, what they're best at, and um, and then you you work work to the strength of it. Obviously, if you can do, if you run the ball well, you can throw it well. Uh, that's the best of both worlds, and so that combination has always been tough uh, for defenses uh, to. You know to work with, so um, you know I think both teams are capable of doing that. That, that, that are in this game. PJ, Coach, I, I apologize if I missed this on Monday, but Chris Jones, he didn't practice a whole lot. And, you know, a lot of games. Curious how he felt this week. <clears throat> yeah, he feels. Uh, I think he feels pretty good. Um, uh, he didn't have a setback, so that, that was good. Um, we kept it uh, that twenty play area right there. So, which was smart, uh, I think, um, and, and good for him. And he didn't wear us out on it, which, which um, he want, I know he wanted to play. And, uh, and so, but he didn't completely beat us up on it every five seconds. But he, uh, when he got in there, he, you know, he, he did some nice things. So, um, originally we started him, or initially we started him uh, in the, on third downs, and then he was feeling good, and we put him in couple situations, uh, first, second out situations. Last one, Coach. Coach, with so much to say about, you know, you being a phenomenal coach, <laughs> but just not having to win a big win. Um, does that keep you up at night or is it all just you know, No, I, listen, I, I, life's bigger than that. Um, now, that doesn't tell you that I don't want to win. I don't want that to be, I mean, I'm, this is America, man. I'm in it to win. That's what we do. And uh, that, that's how you're, you're, so I don't want that to be slighted. But I also understand I have a perspective of life. Maybe it's my age now, but I, um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to you know, work hard and, and uh, coach hard, do all those things, and, uh, and I'm in swinging. So uh, the best of my ability. Uh, but uh, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that the, um, you know, there aren't other things uh, in life. I understand that too. All right, thank you. Good, good.